frightened to do this makeup. First of all, I've not done any kind of special effects makeup in ages, and it is my favourite kind of makeup to do. I don't know why I haven't done it. I suppose like I just don't have time, like between work and being a mum and trying to maintain a social life, which I've actually just started watching Game of Thrones, so I have no social life at the moment. Um, all my free time is doing that. But anyway, in honour of my 27th birthday, I've decided that I'm going to do some old age special effects makeup. Why would I degrade myself like that? I really, <laughs> really don't know. It takes so long to do. And obviously with having like entire latex over your face what we'll be using to like stipple on some wrinkles um it's not the best for your skin i do usually end up breaking it pretty badly after it um but <laughs> it'll, it'll be fun i'm sure um i have done this once before um maybe like Two year ago i want to say when i first started like really playing about with like special effects makeup and I bought myself like a full um, kit full of special effects makeup so I was like really into doing it kind of all the time. Um, I, I am quite excited to get back into some special effects makeup and I also have some plans for in October to kind of only upload special effects slash like Halloween face painting -y type tutorials. I might do a couple with James like some fun ones. Um, I really, I remember saying months and months ago that I kind of wanted to turn him into Scarf from the Lion King so I think I'm going to do that at some point and he has a really amazing idea for what he wants to be for Halloween and um, I will be filming transforming him into whatever I'm transforming him into. I'm not going to tell you, you'll have to wait and see if you want to find out. But it's really cool. Um, I'm also not telling you because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to like pull it off and be able to do the special effects for it. But um, I will just fingers crossed and see. If no video comes of it, you know that I've tried and you know that I've fucked up and not been able to do it. But I'm kind of rambling. Like I, this has been on for six minutes and I don't even think I've done a proper intro yet. I just turned the camera on and just started blah 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 blah. Anyway, the first step, I suppose, is to take this makeup off, which I am going to do right now. Oh, my lashes are glued on. They're glued on very good. Ah! Liquid latex all over your face can be very drying for your skin, so you want to make sure that you're putting a moisturiser on before you put it on everywhere. Uh, preferably one that's oil-free, because the latex may have a harder time sticking to it, and... Um, I really like Vanishing Cream by Lush because it absorbs into your skin really well and it leaves your skin with a kind of matte finish which is good if you're doing any types of special effects makeup because any shine or oil or anything will just make the product um, not stick to your skin as well and if you are doing this for like an event like Halloween or something like that obviously you're wanting it to last as long as possible so matte dry finish is best for that. I am actually going to go in with a little bit of foundation on my skin and then I'm going to dry that in place with a powder. Again, this is a matte foundation that I'm using. It's the Wet n Wild um, Photo Focus foundation, matte finish, and then I'm going to powder it in place. This is just to kind of act like a barrier between the liquid latex and my skin because um, I don't want to apply it just directly onto my skin with nothing underneath to kind of protect it, so to speak. I've also took this foundation just right over my lips and this will help to create the illusion of like a much thinner lip later on because as you probably know as you age your lips do get slightly thinner so we're just kind of blanking them out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is contour but not really contour under my cheekbones to give the illusion that they're a little bit more sunken in than what they are. Um, I'm using the Revolution Pro HD Powder Contour and I'm going to this colour here. Obviously depending on the shade of your skin you'll use whatever you have. And I'm mainly keeping this to the back of my cheekbones to give it a more realistic look. And I'm just going to go in with a smaller fluffy brush into that same colour and use that around the tip of my nose to give it a more bulbous look I suppose. So I'm contouring kind of 
in a circle to make this tip look a lot bigger and stick out more than what it actually is. This is relatively easy for me to do because I do have a more prominent tip on my nose. If you don't, um, I can't really tell you how to contour because um, it all just really depends on what your face shape is. Um, but basically what I'm doing is trying to get this part to stand out more than what it is. Sorry, I'm like the best at explaining. <laughs> I've also taken that colour up right in between the eyes where my eyes meet my nose basically just to darken that area up a little more. I'm also just going to dip into that colour again and I'm kind of patting it on my forehead here. I already have some natural sun damage here but I am just darkening that up a little bit more because as you get older, you, if you've been in the sun a little bit, you're probably going to have some age spots or freckles or sun damage or whatever you want to call it. Essentially it is sun damage to your skin but you call it what you want to call it hun. I'm just using the Kylan Burning Injury Wheel um, and I'm going to go in with this kind of salmon pink shade here. You can use whatever you have, maybe you have like an eyeshadow or a lipstick or something a similar to colour of this. Um, it is just to create a little bit of colouring in my skin around where like I'm going to be placing the lines and wrinkles and stuff. Um, and I just think it helps to give it a more realistic look if I do this step first. But um, it, it's not essential that you use this exact product that I'm using. I'm just dipping my brush in there, getting any excess off in the back of my hands and what I'm doing is like raising my eyebrows so that I can see where my lines and wrinkles are going to go and I'm basically just patting that on top of any lines that I have. And then same thing with other places in my face, I mean throughout this video I am going to be pulling some questionable faces um, but that is the best thing to do if you want to get your wrinkles looking as natural as possible if you kind of scrunch your face around and find where your own natural wrinkles lie and then work with them it's much better and much more realistic um, than creating wrinkles that don't already exist using your own face and the wrinkles and lines that you already have is always going to be much more realistic than creating new lines and wrinkles and if you have no lines and wrinkles I hate you also just taking that pink shade and lightly putting it over my eyelids because as you get older the skin on your face is a lot thinner so as you can see like my eyelids are already like pretty pink toned colour anyway. What is that black? Where'd that come from? Where is it? How's that? Yeah so as you can see my eyelids are already pretty pink toned anyway when they don't have anything on it and you can kind of see my veins a bit so I'm just kind of um, accentuating that. And then what I'm going to do is take a tiny little bit of purple from here, doo, 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 just a little bit, and again put the excess off in the back of my hands, and I'm just going to use this to darken up my under eye and give myself some really nice dark circles to go with my lines and wrinkles. Okay, what I'm actually going to do just before I go with my any lines and wrinkles is create a little bit more freckles or age spots on my skin. And um, you don't need to do this if you don't want. You can just go straight ahead to the. Um, putting the wrinkles in and then wrinkle stippling but I just like to add a little bit more because um, I'm extra. So again with this you can kind of work and you can kind so again with this if you have natural pigmentation in your skin it kind of works in your favour because you can work with what you already have. If not you can look at some reference pictures of like old age people and kind of reference them when you're popping in some freckles and wrinkles and stuff. I'm sorry if this tutorial is like a little bit all over the place. I never really like planned on filming it or planned what I was going to do. I've only done like this kind of makeup before once I think. Um, maybe about two years ago when I was kind of playing about with makeup. So I just thought I would film it today because I just thought that it would be fun but um, I've not really like planned it out like a tutorial for people to kind of learn from it or anything. I'm just playing with makeup really. And now to create the wrinkles I'm just going in with this same contour palette before and I'm using a brown that's a little bit, mm, wait. Yeah I think I'm going to go in with this 
slightly darker brown here. It's just a little bit darker than the one that I used to kind of contour out my cheeks and stuff. And I'm taking a really, really skinny brush. This is like an angled liner brush from Makeup Geek. But literally any tiny skinny brush, even like a paint brush or anything like that that you have will do. Just so you can get right into your crevices. And again, what I'm doing is raising my eyebrows to find my lines. And then literally just drawing them in. What I like to do is once I've dipped into the pigment, go to like the the deepest point of the wrinkle. So for this one here, it's there, and that's where I'll go in, and then I'll kind of drag the colour out to the ends because your wrinkles aren't going to be as deep at the edges as they are in the centre of the wrinkle. So just bear that in mind. Also you don't have to use powder for this, you can use like cream or um, anything that you have handy. I personally just like working with powder better, um, I find a lot more realistic looking, I find it easier for me to blend. Um, sometimes I can find it quite difficult to work with a lot of cream products, maybe that's why. Um, so I just like to use a powder and if you look at brown powder something kind of everyone has handy um, even if it's like an eyeshadow or something um, someone's probably got some sort of brown powder lying around the house somewhere and again if it's looking a little bit mental I just like to go in and blend it out with my finger and basically what you want to do is make as many faces as possible to create as many lines as you can. Me, every day. <laughs> I will never look like this. I promise I'm gonna get so much Botox. I'm not, I'm not one for growing old gracefully, not into it. For the wrinkles around my eyes, I'm going to go in with a lighter contour shade just because realistically the lines around your eyes aren't going to be as deep as the lines um, on like your forehead and around your mouth and stuff like that. Um, the skin around your eyes is a lot finer than anywhere else so it just makes sense that the wrinkles aren't capable of being as deep because your skin isn't as thick. I'm actually just going to switch brushes to this like Kryolan skinny brush. It's just a little bit um, less dense than this one. Like the tip of this one's a lot thicker than what this one is. And I need something just a little bit skinnier for around my eyes. Because as you can see that's not really coming up as wrinkles. That's just coming up as kind of blobs. Maybe I will go on with like a little bit of the darkest colour on like some places in my eyes, like see where those lines are like really deep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's like a little bit better. And I don't really have any lines and wrinkles on my cheek, so I'm just going to like create a few. Ugh, I don't like doing this part. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is go over all of that with the Ben Nye Ring mm. Okay, to make that a little bit more kind of realistic looking and let's be honest, just to kind of make a bit of a mess and have a little bit more fun, I'm going to go in with the Ben Nye Wrinkle Stipple Liquid Latex. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to like pour it into a little jar, I'm going to take a makeup wedge and basically, oh, what you have to do is stretch little sections of your skin. Take your latex on um, a little sponge or a brush or whatever you're using, I would recommend a sponge. Kind of stipple it on, 
wait for it to dry. Once it's dried, you powder it, release it, and then move on, move on to another section of your face. I would recommend this that if you've never used it before that you do like a patch test, maybe like on a sensitive area of your skin, like kind of like in here can be quite a good wee area to do it just to make sure that you're not going to react badly um, because it can be quite strong um, if you've got sensitive skin, I don't recommend using this at all and um, if you've got like really bad um, acne or anything on your face, I wouldn't recommend using it because um, this definitely breaks me out and my skin um, is always really really bad the day after that I've used this so just so you know it's important that you stretch the skin so that when you let it go that's kind of like when the wrinkle is formed um, I would also highly recommend that you do thin layers to start with if you feel like you need more than one layer that's fine but I would start off with one layer wait for it to dry see how you feel about it and then go on top with another layer because if you put it on really really thick you're going to have a problem, it's going to make a mess and it's not going to dry as quick and it's going to, it's just basically not going to look very good. Um, this can be really time consuming. What you can do um, instead of just waiting for it to naturally air dry is take your hair dryer on like the cool setting because we're not trying to get burned and kind of like give it a little blast with that. Obviously hold it like a little bit away from your face, you don't want it to be too close. This is also probably a lot easier if someone else is doing it for you so they would hold your skin in place and you would put the latex on your skin and then um, yeah, let it go, powder etc. The reason that you want to powder before you let the skin go is because once you let the skin go the latex is just all going to stick to each other and it's going to be a disaster. You powder it then let go. As you can see you might end up with some like flaky peely bits here. I don't really know how to stop that, like I say I've only done this once before so um, give me a break. Down here, I'm gonna go right over the lips. So as you can see those areas where I've went a little bit too thick, like here and here, that's why I was saying before that you want to make sure and oh my god I've got slabber right in my face. Yeah, so you want to make sure that your layers are as thin as possible so that you're not left with like this like white streaky mark. Um, I will go in and try and fix it with concealer and hide that best as I possibly can. But it's just so much easier if you try and avoid that to start off with, like I says, with very thin layers. It very careful when going around your eye, be careful not to get it on your eyelashes and obviously I don't need to tell you not to get it in your eyeball if you want to like miss out like this section completely of your eyes I don't blame you um my eyes kinda are stinging when I'm doing it my eyes always sting when I'm using latex um that is just something that you should maybe be warned about and I probably wouldn't go in with a hair dryer at my under eye area either. Um, just because the skin is so delicate there, I would just wait for this to naturally dry. So I'm going to wait for this to dry then do the rest of my face off camera because this is very time consuming. So I'll be back a couple of years older. Okay, I'm back. Looking good, looking well aged. Um, so basically I've finished the latex and what I've done is and kind of some of the lines that we kind of lost by putting the latex on I've just went in and um, touched them up a little bit and I've also just put a tiny little bit more purple underneath my eyes because I felt like I was looking very blank and just the one colour and I feel like this is just nice and kind of helps to age me. Uh, as you can also see there is some like bits here that's kind of like lumpy and not the same texture as everywhere else. That's because I was getting a little bit too impatient with waiting for it to dry and I was either like powdering over it while it wasn't completely dry or I was getting a little bit 
lazy in my application of thin layers so I was kind of putting on thicker layers and this as you can see is how it will dry if you put thicker layers on so um yeah it's definitely worth um taking the time and going slowly for better results um I'm just so impatient that um couldn't be arsed actually Okay, and what I'm going to do is take this Ben Nye mascara, and it is a white mascara, and I'm going to brush that through my eyebrows, just to, you know, grey them up a little bit. Um, I've also went on my eyebrows with latex, which was 100% unintentional. Um, it's very, very dumb to put latex in your eyebrows. Please don't do that. And I'm also just going to use this to grey up my eyelashes as well. Or whiten up my eyelashes. As you can see, I haven't been on my actual eyelids with the latex. Um, I don't want to do that. Um, wouldn't recommend doing it either. If you really want to, I suppose you could go on like this bit here under your brow bone just so the texture's kinda the same as it is on the rest of your face. But I definitely wouldn't go like right on the eyelid. And for fun I'm just gonna add like a little bit of lipstick, but I'm not taking it to an actual lip line, I'm just kinda placing it in the inner half of my lips to give the illusion that my lips are a lot thinner than what they are. You don't have to do this, but old Lady Christie is Definitely still wearing a red lip. But what I am going to do is go in with the Cryolan Colour Spray and this is in the shade D19 which is basically just like a grey coloured hairspray which um, I've not used before so I hope doesn't get my entire room a mess but I'm going to assume that you just spray it on your hair. Colour spray. Hold from a distance, 30 centimetres, do not inhale, obviously, do not spray into eyes, obviously. Uh, you know what would have been smart, but because I'm not smart, never done. If I held like a tissue or something like against my neck, so that um, I wasn't spraying over the makeup that I've literally just done. But um, I'm not smart, so I didn't do that. You know what I look like right now? I look like in Merlin when he turns into Emerus, the old guy. That is literally what I look like right now. Hello, honey. You want a boiled candy? Mm. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned something new. I hope that you've enjoyed becoming 27 with me. And um, I'll see you again in a future video. Bye! I enjoy this part because I'm sick. <laughs> Just to warn you, if you have like little baby hairs, <gasps> wait, watch it, you know. If you have baby hairs, this is gonna hurt. This would never have happened back in my day.